Hey, it's Christine Horn. Welcome back to another episode of Booking Magnet Magic. Today, you are in for a treat. I know I say that all the time, but for real. Y'all are gonna meet an original booking magnet in my head. Now, yes, I coined the term booking magnet. I call myself booking magnet, honey. I wear the shirt all the time. But even before the term existed, the action, the people already existed. And for me, Donna Bisco is one of those people. She played my mom <laughs> on a movie we did many years ago with Nate Parker called uh, Blood Done Sign My Name. Donna Bisco, we met in Atlanta, Georgia. She truly is a booking magnet. I mean, I would be here all day listing her credits, so I'm not gonna do that. You can check out all her links in the show notes, right? All the things she's been in. She's been everybody's mama, auntie, cousin, and favorite person on screen. <laughs> I mean, truly, you'll just have to look at her IMDb and you'll be like, oh, I know her. But you know, there's something special that happens when you get to talk to someone who has just put in the work. And I really resonate with this conversation with Donna because Donna, her career began in the theater, you know, from off Broadway to regional theater, then into doing feature films and blockbusters and tons of television. So you're really gonna enjoy this interview because it just will give you a perspective that it's never too late to get started. Donna didn't start acting when she was 12 or in grade school. No, she started when she was a grown woman. So if that's you and that's already exciting you, then get ready. Pull up, pull up your favorite uh, beverage, get a snack, pull over to the side of the road, check out while you're working, whatever you're doing, and enjoy this interview with Donna Disco. Hey, hey, welcome back to another episode of Booking Magnet Magic. I am here with the legendary Donna. <laughs> Bisco, I say legendary because y'all, y'all know me. I call myself the booking magnet. I speak life into myself. I draw bookings to me. I draw and I speak that to my audience. But Donna Bisco is the my original booking magnet in my head. <laughs> She's everybody's mama, auntie, friends, teacher, FBI agent, like <laughs> everybody's mama. I mean, truly. I mean, when I, I went to your IMDB page. And I felt like this is not true. She's been in 8,000 things. Cause I see that <laughs> everywhere. But yes, girl, I've been blessed. Welcome, Donna. Thank you for saying Thank you. this. Thank you for being Thank here. Thank you so much for having me. I, oh. When um, your team got in contact, I was like, yeah, I want to do this. I liked the idea of passing on what I know mm -hmm. as my career has blossomed. Um, and I do that as often as I can. And I try to do it on platforms like this mm -hmm. uh, because I think it's so important to help others along as they come along, mm -hmm. um, to help them know what I feel is important and unimportant, what has worked for me. Right. Um, and to uh, pass that along. So I, I was happy to, to talk to you. Well, I'm grateful. I know y'all are looking at the screen right now like, I know her, yeah, I know you do. You know, I Donna, I joke, I, I, I was telling one of my friends recently, I said, I feel like I'm in the stage of my career where people don't know my name, where they like, she, she, she was in that thing. Yeah, I well, you know what, girl? I am in that same space. <laughs> People don't know my name, but knock on wood, give me some wood. Somewhere. Yes. I've been fortunate enough in the last couple of years to work on a lot of stuff as a guest star. Mm -hmm. um, so, and I'll tell you a quick story. Uh, and you'd be surprised, but last summer I was in LA mm -hmm. and that was, this is the first year I've actually gotten LA represented, a representation. Oh. Wow. And um, he set up, I set up um, some meetings with agents, but my manager also set up meetings with casting people out there. So I started going to uh, several casting directors and I was shocked when I would walk in and they would say, I feel like I know you already because <laughs> I've seen you everywhere. <laughs> you know, so... That was uh, that was a big shock. 
for me, but I was very pleased that the work mm-hmm. that I had been putting in was starting to be noticed. Speaking of that, and I don't think starting, I think it, like you, I think it was a beautiful confirmation that it has been noticed, yeah. Yeah. you know, but you, when you're in your bubble, living your life, you know, especially living in the Southeast and, and making a career for yourself, you just don't always feel immediately the impact. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I've always told people when they naturally assume that I work out of L.A., that, no, I made my career from Atlanta. That's where I chose to live. That's where I chose to stay with my family. And I've been fortunate enough to be able to carve out uh, some semblance of a career um, that's really been very satisfying for me. And uh, it's allowed me to have a family, have a home that I can afford, Mm -hmm. um, to uh, make friends here, lifelong friends that I've known forever since I first started my career. And um, I've never really felt the need to pack up and move into that larger market until this year. Mm. Um, because I, I, I've just been so fortunate, you know, and yeah. I think it comes from being dedicated to learning when I'm on each and every step, being quiet when I needed to do, be quiet mm-hmm. and watch and listen. Yeah, it's so important, I think. Um, so because I've been fortunate enough to work alongside and have guest starring roles or co-starring roles um, alongside the leads in yeah. a movie or a TV show. So a lot of my learning curve has come from being in the crust of it. Yeah, yeah. Being in the center of it. Thrown in, you gonna you yeah. gonna sink and swim. Exactly, and that's how my acting career started. I yeah, well, let's tell me tell me about that. I, where I, where, I, where, I, where, are you, where are you from originally? How did you even get into this world? Because I I'm originally from Georgia. I'm a Georgia okay. peach. Come on, right. and uh, I was a flight attendant with okay. Eastern Airlines, and. Um, I will never forget it. I was on my way to Minneapolis and there was this dude on the flight. He was going through headshots. And you know how every little girl has always said they want to be a model or they want to be on TV, you know, and I struck up this conversation with this man and uh, said, you know, I've always been interested in, you know, maybe doing a little acting. And so we struck up this really nice conversation and I got to Minneapolis. And the gate agent came on and said, somebody wants to talk to you. I knew I didn't know anybody in Minneapolis. <laughs> and it was the guy I had been talking to on the plane. And he asked if I wanted to work his show. So what? I was like, yeah, cool. You know, so I came back to Atlanta, girl, all excited and said, well, I got to get some headshots. <laughs> so I went out and I got some headshots. And the whole nine yards. Of course, never heard from the man. But I had all this material. He sparked, he sparked something, though. Yes, he did. So yeah. I said, well, you know what? I got these headshots. I, at that time, you could actually go into an agent's office. Mm-hmm. So, girl, I made me a list. <laughs> I got in my car one day, and I started going the agent's office with my hair job. The very first one I went to signed me. And I just started from there. I started out doing print. And then all of a sudden she sent me on a commercial audition. And I was like, I don't know anything about acting. <laughs> <laughs> she said, just go. I don't know nothing about it. She said, well, just go and pretend like you do. Just go. So I, of course, I didn't get the job, but 
me being the person that I am and not wanting to arrive somewhere, not looking like I don't know what I'm doing, mm-hmm. <laughs> I started taking classes. Okay. And I booked my first theater production. And I just kept studying and kept studying. And I ended up going to New York for six months, studying with Strasburg okay. at the Strasburg Institute. And it's just been going ever since. It's been, and my very first acting job, television. Okay. Was <laughs> it was so learning bad. on the job. Oh my God! It was bad. It was bad. The what made it bad? What made it bad? Well, the, the director thought I stank because oh. I was so nervous. I thought I was doing a good job, and then I finally did one take, and he went, "Oh, finally, some sense of acting." And I was crushed. Oh, oh my God, I was Ouch. rushed. And uh, I was like, okay. okay. I'm, like, I'm only getting better. I'm going to get better. No one's going to say that, to, say that, that about me ever again. That will never, ever happen again. And so I just really delve into studying and uh, I told my agent, look, I just I just need to take some more classes. Don't be sending me out because she started me out on a pretty nice part. <laughs> and um, I said, just just let me get a little something. And I did more theater. Mm-hmm. And the more theater I did, the more confident I became in what I was doing. Because it was really learning, I, and I'll tell anybody, theater is the very, very best for learning how to act. Absolutely. It's so different from film and television, but just the bare bones of acting, mm-hmm. not be theater. I don't care what anybody says. You just I wholeheartedly agree. Yeah. So I and. Blessings, all of you know, blessings and grace have come to me since then. Yeah. And you've maintained both, you know, just watching your career over the years. You've maintained like starring in a show at, you know, one of the big theater houses or, you know, regional theater and while and then being doing TV shows or doing a movie. Fun fact, Donna played my mother in a movie called Blood Done Sign My Name. (laughs) Sign (laughs) Nate Parker. And I remember being like, that's Donna Bisco. She everybody knows. I remember that. Oh my God. Yes, that was a while back. But... I am dating myself, girl. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm in it with you. I'm dating myself. Because <laughs> people, because people don't believe how long I've been at this. Yeah. I, I was I considered myself entering the entertainment business late because i was in my late 20s yeah when i started and for hollywood that's old that's mm-hmm. getting old yeah and um but i was determined once because you know you get that bug once yeah. once you start and you just i just got the bug and i was telling i said well it seems like maybe this might be what i'm good at <laughs> So I I think I'm going to try it out. And luckily for me, I had a family base that was super supportive. I mean, super supportive. And um, this girl, when I first started getting some success, I wanted to test the waters in a larger market. And it was Mm -hmm. New York. Mm-hmm. And something, something in my soul was eating at me, saying, you've got to try. Because I had been successful in Atlanta a lot. Mm-hmm. And I sat my husband down one day. And I said, look, I really need to see if I can make it in a large market. If I can compete right. in a large 
market. And he had been a football player, a professional football player. So he had a sense of what that was like. Mm -hmm. And he said, okay. He said, that's, that's cool. And But I didn't want him to finance it. Oh, I sold okay. my car. You have to prove you have to prove it to yourself all every step of the way. Every step of the way. And I sold my car and some more possessions. And we went to New York and found me a little studio apartment. And I signed up with a temp agency. So when I wasn't working, I could work. And I I girl, I hit the floor running. I think I had been there four weeks and I booked my first off Broadway. Oh, wow. Play. Yeah. Wow. So I was there about almost two years. And of course I got pregnant. <laughs> so I said, okay, it's time for me to go home. <laughs> <laughs> that was cute. That was cute. But, uh, yeah. But yeah, you know, I mean, you know, you know to, uh, steer the steering wheel a different way, so. <laughs> which was a whole nother thing. And I think that's, it's hard for women, you know, when you're um, ambitious mm -hmm. and you feel even to yourself, you like you have to prove something, having a baby adds a whole nother level to it. And I think that's why I waited until I was older to have my daughter, mm -hmm. because I knew how I felt about raising a kid and that I wanted to be there. So I pretty much stopped acting for her first two years of life. I stayed home with her and then I got the itch again. Mm -hmm. And I called my agent. I had gotten an agent in New York. And I said, well, just, you know, we can just start sending me stuff. And she sent me an um, audition for a play at the Arena Theater, one of the leads, Holiday Heart. I'll never forget it. And I was determined, even if I didn't get it, that I was going to go in there and do the audition of my life life. Yes. I let them know I had a baby. I had just had, I don't even think she was two now that I think about it. She wasn't. That I had just had a baby and they were like, okay. So I got the part. I mean, I went in there just determined, focused, and they almost, it was my understanding, they almost didn't hire me because I had a baby. Mm. But the guy, Jamie, he was the lead. He said, no, no you are not going to let that not be what you not hire, why you not hire her. Right. That can't, that, that can't be the reason. Yeah. You know, <laughs> so they went ahead and hired me. And then that's a whole nother level for women. You panic. Oh my God, now I got to get everything in place. Mm -hmm. You know, because I was taking her with me. And, um, but when you set your mind to it and you pray on it, mm -hmm. it, everything just fell in place. Everything fell right in place. And it was a beautiful run for me. And I've just been really working ever since. Yeah. I love what I love about your story is several, several pieces of this because I've interviewed a lot of people who um, were kind of similar to me. I like, I always knew this is what I wanted to do, you know, mm -hmm. so very little. So to hear like, no, I, you were started, you got the bug, the bug really hit later in life before you even really decided to start it. And I know this is going to be an inspiration to so many parents, especially mothers who struggle with, and I talked to many of them in my community of, putting themselves last, putting their dreams last, this dream deferred. That's why I have a lot of clients who I cap, I'm capturing in their next chapter. Kids mm -hmm. are out the house finally, or they're, they're retired, or they're divorced, or they told their husband, okay, it's my time now. So I love just hearing how you're saying like, prayer, faith, determination, like the baby ain't going nowhere, we here. So 
Right. <laughs> Listen, I was like, I'm strapping her on my back. <laughs> she come along. Right. <laughs> and uh, I took her with me and we, we made it work. You know, yeah. my husband would come up and visit and he would take her home sometime and then he would bring her back. So it was like six, oh, uh, I think it was there for almost six months. And wow. um, yeah, it was hard, but we made it work. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Y'all listening, it is possible. Anything is possible. Yeah. Right? And it, it's, of course, it helps when you have a support system, even if it's like friends or loved ones, for sure. Mm -hmm. So when I know you didn't really start until a little bit later and then the rest is history. But when you were younger, like I'm talking like childhood age, mm -hmm. what would some of the stuff that you were that you enjoyed watching? Did you go see a lot of plays when you were younger? Or did you really curl up to a good movie or a film? Like what was the thing that made you lean in? What kind of and what kind of performers? You know, when I was actually young, I thought I was going to be a dancer. Mm. I did because when I was in, I started in junior high school, I had a PE teacher who saw some potential. I loved, loved dancing. And um, she would get me in PE class and we would have these dance classes and she saw something in me and she put me in a dance troupe because we used to have a citywide competition. And she put me in this dance troupe and I'll never forget it. We did the Pink Panther and I played the Pink Panther. I had to leave in the dance oh. troupe and we won. Yeah. And I absolutely loved it. But, you know, like so many families growing up, my mom really could not afford to send me to dance school. Mm. So I never got any formal training or anything like that, but I danced all the way through high school. And then when I started flying, uh, I hurt my knee <laughs> on the airplane. So that kind of mixed that. But growing up, I always and still to this day love comedies. Really? I, I swear to God, it's just... I don't know if it's if it comes from a place of wanting to escape all the madness of the world, even as a child, because I remember growing up and when Martin Luther King got assassinated, I would <clears throat> always watch some comedy show because I would see everybody around me so upset and you know, all of that, watching my mom as I grew up. And I would always, even to this day, Christine, I watch a comedy before I go to bed. Every really? I love that though, because you go to sleep joy, feeling joyful yeah. and yeah. smile on your face. Yes, I mean, ask my husband every single night. Okay. I watch. I'm taking a little. I'm taking a little note. That might. Yeah, that's, that's I do because it's like there is so much craziness in the world now mm. that you have to deal with on a daily basis. When I want some kind of escapism, mm -hmm. I want it to be happy. Yeah. You know, I like uh, movies that are comedies. Mm -hmm. uh, I watch a lot of those. Uh, anything African-American, that's a comedy. I yeah. watched growing up but you know every now and then i would watch just because you're supposed to but watch a drama yeah or... you're like because you're supposed to yeah, you know. <laughs> i gotta add it i gotta add it in <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, i'm supposed to watch this so I'm watch <laughs> but I, i'm just weird that way i like i like keeping the levity because my husband is a silly man mm -hmm. and so we um, we kind of try to stay on that plane, you know. I love that. And when you watch performers, whether it was back back when you were younger or right now, when you're watching, when you see a performance that, whether it's a, a, a mm -hmm. theater performance or a film or TV show, what kind of performers stand out to you? What kind of quality 
do those performers have? The ones that make you say, hmm, that's good. They, that's, they're doing a good job. You know, I used to love Alfred uh, Woodard. Oh, still do. Yeah. Oh, my God. She was the one that was always for me because she had so many different levels to her. Mm -hmm. she, she, like, she's, she's still doing it. Um, because she can do comedy, she can do drama. Mm -hmm. um, she just really, she is so multifaceted when it comes to acting. She's, she's always, always been my favorite. But you know, that's one thing I'm loving about this whole streaming service stuff is that I'm seeing so many new faces. Yes. Yes. Uh, African-American new faces, uh, uh, black actors getting opportunities uh, that I'm going, oh, okay, she's good. Mm -hmm. She's really good or he's really good. Mm -hmm. um, that's really been uh, nice to watch. Yeah. Just more opportunity. I mean, truly, yeah. it comes down to that. You know, really? and, you know it, and I remember there was a point years ago before all the streaming there was that point where, remember how back in the day, if you did movies, you did movies. If you did TV, you did TV. Yes. And then there was that day where, hold up, why are these movie stars doing yes, this? On television? television, I said the same thing. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> she must be out of work. She's doing TV. Right. <laughs> Which is the wrong way to think about it. But right. uh, television writing has gotten so so much better than it used to be, especially on, you know, network, Apple TV, mm -hmm. stuff like that. That's, I, I've gotten to the point now that when I want to see a good movie or something, I go to streaming services, yeah. you know, to watch uh, a good movie now, because you really don't have to go to the movies. At all. Anymore. And now it's like, and, and I say that to say like, because of all these platforms, there's just so much content and such a need for more talent. And yes. I, I can test, I'm a testament to that has benefited me, like finding oh, my yes. life, getting to know who I am and what I offer um, and having more opportunities. Just There's just more TV shows than film, period. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's just how it always is. So that's why I love, I love television so much. I love it all, but that yeah. opportunity to try on so many hats and guest star and, and and hop around. Yeah. I love that versatility. Yeah, yeah. Hey, what's up? It's Christine Horn, The Booking Magnet. I am so excited to invite you to our next event. It is called Booking Magnet Live. It's happening in Atlanta, Georgia on July 15th and 16th, 2022. You're gonna spend two days surrounded with actors oh, just like you. Actors who want more, actors who are looking for a safe space, a sanctuary, a safe haven to express themselves, to learn, to grow, and to connect. So I'm excited for you to experience that. Make sure you join us July 15th and 16th. You can click the link below, and I'm so excited to see you there. For you, Donna, this is like my Oprah question, okay? <laughs> What do you know for sure that Donna uniquely brings to the table? Like no one has to validate this for you. When you show up on a set or when you just show up around in the world, what is your like thing that makes you magnetic and magical without even trying? It's just your thing. You know, I, I, I think I try no matter what, my situation is or where I am or what set I come on to or who I'm working with, I come into that space, hopefully, with no judgment, mm. regardless of what I might have heard about somebody, regardless of what I might have heard about how they are on the set or who they are as a person. Mm -hmm. I try to step into that space with other people, pretty much like a baby. Because mm. you know how babies accept you for who you are? Immediately, unconditionally. Right yeah. away, if you're kind and loving to them. Mm -hmm. So 
<clears throat> because I've worked with some people where I have heard some terrible things about them and got on set and was open to, this is my time with you. Mm -hmm. And was like, well, where is all of that? They were, right. other people were saying. So for me, it's just, uh, folks know me to, it's very seldom you'll be able to find somebody that's able to say, yeah, she's a B. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I'm the kind of person, I'm going to come to you with an open heart. Yeah. With an open heart. Um, if I can help you in any way, I will. If I can impart whatever wisdom I can, I will. I try to be honest. If you're coming to me honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm going to come with you, come to you with joy. Yeah. You know, and I think, I think that's how people know me. I hope, mm -hmm. you know, now mind you, if you come across like, cause I've had times where people, you know, cause everybody's not going to be nice to you. It's true. Honestly. But people, people get what they give, right? Yeah. I mean, they do. They, they want. So I think I've prided myself in saying, okay, I got that energy. Right. And to be able to keep on stepping and do, yeah. and, you know, and do my job. But um, I think, I, I, I think folks know that I'll, I'll just step to you with an open heart. You know, I'll give you a big hug, kiss you, say, call me. When yeah. you need. Um, I think that's what I'm known for. I love that. And I, I I mean, that's what I felt. I mean, I haven't been around you a ton, but the times that I have, I feel yeah. that. And it's a really good lesson and reminder, I believe, not come, not showing up with preconceived things. Because in this industry, everybody has a different experience with people. Yes, they do. And you never know, like like I said a second ago, where that story is stemming from. Oftentimes, what, like, what was your energy when you dealt with that person? Right. You know, what, was, what was being mirrored? in that right. moment and right. now that's your memory and now you can choose to keep make that the story forever right or like that show up open so I'm, I'm even taking that that too just yeah. staying yeah. open in the process for yeah sure. you have to know when god is showing you grace mm -hmm. and i know i i try to know when god is showing me grace because lord knows i for me to be where i am in this industry no, ain't nothing but grace. Yeah. You know, because you hear about women, especially in my category, not working at all. Absolutely. Or gave up because yeah. it was too hard way before. They yeah. couldn't, couldn't take it. Yeah. So um, I also go on the set knowing, beside hard work, <laughs> mm -hmm. trying to get better and better every day, how lucky I am. And because people talk, you know, producers call around when they oh, yeah. think of hiring you and say, yeah, you work with her, but she cool. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So we have to remember, as that old saying says, love <laughs> conquers all. Yeah. So, yeah. And y'all listening and watching, like, take note. Like, this is an actress who has been in the game for a minute. Yes. And she's still saying want to do my best work i want to show like take note because that i mean the someone wanting to be on set with you for 14 hours a day like it's it's more than your talent there's tons of talented people yes, but sir. you know that talent plus plus your heart plus your work ethic do you show up on time are you courteous all those pieces to the puzzle count yeah, yeah they really do because my last job whoo can i tell you this quick story yes please I just finished working on All Rise mm -hmm. out in California. So around 2.45 in the morning, my manager calls me. Okay, first of all, every because you know, somebody calls you at 2.45. Like, what's what's going on? <laughs> right. And um, she said, first, everything's okay. 
I don't know how I missed this. They kept me out of the loop. I don't know what happened. Somebody dropped it on, but you booked all rise. Yay. But they want you to work today. All rise shoots in LA. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in Atlanta. Right. So I sit straight up going, what? <laughs> yeah. They want you to work this evening. Um, and you need to get tested this morning. Like before I get on the plane, before I catch a six. No, I'm plane. like, wait, what? <laughs> so I'm like, okay, think. Do I really want to try to do this? Now, mind you, especially for a woman in my category, this is coming out of LA. Um, and I don't want to miss this opportunity. Right. So I woke my husband up. I said, I need to go to LA. He's like, what? what? He's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I need to go to LA. So I get up, get on my computer. I get a flight, throw my clothes in the bag. Um, and my, my manager and I are talking back and forth. And she says, yeah, you, I think there you're in two episodes. You got to be out here for about two weeks. <laughs> oh, now I'm packing for two weeks? Girl, <laughs> I'm like, what? Two weeks? I was like, oh my God, now I have to come out there and find somewhere to stay. Right? <laughs> She's like, don't worry about it. You can stay with me. Just get on the plane. <laughs> So my husband take we run it out to the uh, airport to catch a flight at six o'clock. Yeah, so I said, I said that's the first that's the first one you can get out of Atlanta. Yeah. Uh, and so, girl, I don't even get there until like twelve thirty, almost one o'clock. And I rent a car. In the meantime, my daughter's trying to find me a hotel and a rental car and the whole bit, you know. And. Um, I finally get to testing in Burbank mm -hmm. and um, do my testing, trying to find my hotel. I said, well, I can lay down for about two, three hours <laughs> before I have to be on set tonight. Of course, they called me, asked me if I could come in early. <laughs> Why not? You oh, here. So I go all the way out to see me, Dolly, and have to get tested again, you know, because this whole COVID thing has made shooting insane. Yeah. My fitting and go to my trailer. Now I'm trying to take a little nap. But the thing is, in the meantime, as an actor, I'm like, okay, are the lines the same? Do I have new lines? Now I'm in actor mode. Mm -hmm. Because I'm getting ready to shoot in about three hours. Right. And uh, luckily, the lines were the same as my auditioned audition, so I remembered it. But when I got on set, it's like, okay, if you've had that training, mm -hmm. you take a deep breath, you walk on set as if nothing. None of that happened. None, 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 none of the, the craziness. Nothing. None of that craziness has just happened. And by the time I got on set, everybody knew that I had come from Atlanta. And they're looking at me like, what? What time did you get on an airplane? <laughs> I think my flight was at six o'clock. But I was still able to pull off that scene because I think once you've done the work and you have to remember that everything else mm -hmm. goes out the door. Yeah. You really just have to get in that actor mode and say, it's time to do my job. It's time. Cause guess what? When we're looking at that footage, nobody cares. Right. On beforehand. Right. What is, what is landing on this lens? Yeah. And exactly. you do, you got to make peace because I would say that camera is a lie detector and the eyes tell no lies. So if you're not connected, like it all, or really, you really do just have to. Yeah. 
to shake Let it off. Mm -hmm. You really have to shake it off. And it ended up being an absolutely lovely experience. It really, the director was wonderful and he was like, I'm happy. <laughs> and I was like, as long as you're happy, I'm happy. You know, so it was, it, it just all worked out and you have to be prepared for those moments, you know, if, and you have to decide if, okay, am, am I going forward or am I going to let it pass? And I think we just have to be in a place where we say, okay, I'm going for it. And yeah. do our best when we get there. I've had so many moments like that. I mean, so many. When I booked The Lion King in 2006, I was at my day job. I auditioned for The Lion King three at an open call. Three oh years God. later, Donna, three years, no callback. But three years later, out the blue, I'm at my day job. They're like, can you come for a callback? this week in New York, I was like, what? And then I go, didn't book it. And they said, oh, you were next in line. So I go back to my day job. One month later, they call and say, can you be on tour Friday? <gasps> I was like, uh, my last day is today. Like, uh, yeah. <laughs> because it's that moment of, if you don't seize it, yeah. someone, someone else waiting in line. And, and that's- Someone most certainly will be standing right there waiting. Yes. Yes. And though, of course, I know that's, and those of you watching and listening, I know that's the stressful part, but it's also the exciting part, exciting part you yeah. know, but, and so it, it is peaks and valleys and ebbs and flows. And, and with that, I want to transition to that question. You know, you did mention about taking some time off when you had your daughter, but in the, in the quiet times, you have worked a lot, you work a lot, but how have you dealt with the ebb and flow of the industry and not just always in just maybe lack of work, but maybe dealing with perceived rejection like oh it's we thought you found that is down to you and this other actress yeah. they, went, they went you were so close but they went with her like mm -hmm. how have you dealt with that over the years you know it took me a long time to realize that because i've been in that position a lot where you've been pinned for a job especially when you first start acting you just know you're 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 about to get that job and then a week later, you're still waiting, going, uh, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> you're like, they're like, oh, they went with, you know, somebody else. But um, it's heartbreaking at first. It really is heartbreaking. But I had to learn as I went along that a lot of times it has absolutely nothing to do with your craft or if you are or are not a good actor. Mm -hmm. It really, you might be two inches too short mm -hmm. or two inches too tall. Um, and I think you have to learn what I've learned. And I heard this the other day and it just resonated with me. That auditioning is your interpretation of how you think that scene should go or how you would play that scene. It doesn't mean it's wrong. It doesn't mean it's right. It is your interpretation. Mm -hmm. You put it on tape and you let it go. Yeah. Hopefully they like it. They like something about it where they'll call you in for a callback or they'll pin you. And by the way, being pinned for me means they're really looking at somebody else. Mm -hmm. Still playing the field. You cute though. You cute, you cute though if you're not. <laughs> That's what being pinned means. They're looking at somebody else. If that somebody else is not available, we coming back to you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, that's written. It's, it's glorious to be considered in yeah. that. Because it really is true that, okay, they went with somebody else for that, but they might come back around to you for something else. Mm -hmm. There was something in what you did that they liked. Exactly. And not everybody gets to that point. Not everybody gets the audition. Right. <laughs> right. Exactly right. So, um, 
it took me a while to learn that, okay, it's not necessarily about me. It was mm-hmm. hard at first, it really was. And cause I was like, well, why didn't they like me? Why didn't, you know, I get a call back. Why did, but it half the time it's not about you. Yeah. It really is. And half the time they already have somebody else in mind. And I had to learn, especially here in Atlanta, this girl, I, at one point I got so cynical. It's like, I don't know why I'm bothering with this. They are never going to cast this out of Atlanta. You know, we go through that. Mm-hmm. We do as actors here uh, in Southeast. And I even had to get past that. It's like, okay, just do do your audition. Right, do the work. And let's see what happens. So, but yeah, I just... I've gotten to a point, I don't know, maybe it's my age, girl. I don't know. You just do stuff and you go, well, okay, I'm done. <laughs> I forget. But, you know, I think it's just, it's repetition, you know? And when when you are, when it's new and you only have an audition here or there, you put so much weight on that yeah. opportunity. And yeah. this isn't to brag, but when you have five auditions in a week, once I'm done, it's done. And now to the next. Like, I, I can't even sit in it, you know? Yeah. And certainly for sure, when it comes down to pin or, you know, testing for, you know, a lead in a project and, you know, potential series regular that could change your life, of course it sits with you. And, you know, everybody, not one person I've interviewed on this podcast has said they didn't allow themselves to have the feeling. It's frustrating, you know, and it just is what it is, but it is part of, it's part of the journey. It is, it really is. And I always tell um, everybody, if, If you have thin skin, this is not the business for you Mm -hmm. because what it can do to your psyche, if you really let some of this stuff get to you, is not good. Yeah, it really isn't. I, I think you have to have such a sense of confidence in yourself that, yeah, you want the part, you cry about it sometimes, especially when you get this close. Oh, oh, you get, you get this close. <laughs> <laughs> what did I do wrong? And you start questioning yourself. It can be detrimental. It really can. So uh, that's where a good support system comes in. And girl, I always tell everybody, you need a job in this business. I'm sorry. I don't like, I don't play the broke game. Especially when you start now, because you got to eat and you got to have a roof over your head. Because I've known some people. There's this one girl. I was like, no, baby, you got to get a job. Yeah. You know, she was. She wasn't working. She was just auditioning a lot, and you know, said her parents were helping her. And I was like, no, dear, you need a job. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, because it's, it's too much pressure. It, then every job you need to book that job. Yes. You, and so that desperation is oozing all of you. Oozing all out of you. Yeah. And and it's it gets to a point where you don't love what you're doing right. anymore. You know, it's too stressful. So yeah, I'm um I'm a big proponent in that. I worked for years. <laughs> yeah. Me too. I remember Ooh. hearing when I was younger, like, cause you know we don't know what, until we know. So I remember back in the day when I was still in Atlanta and I remember like when I was still doing co-stars and working my nine to five and my six to 10. And I was like, oh, one day I'm going to be a, I'm going to be a guest star. I'm going to do a guest star. I can quit. My <laughs> okay. Oh, poor baby. You're talking about not knowing what you don't know. <laughs> oh my God. Like, oh, you think that one day guest stars is quit worthy? Okay. Okay, baby girl. <laughs> <laughs> I got something for you. Right. <laughs> you Let don't know who you know. Going. You don't. So I, I share that with y'all so you know if you're thinking that you're not alone, but just take this advice. I'm always telling people, even when they're like, any advice for moving to LA or New York? I'm like, save money. Oh, save, save money, money, girl. Save money because it's expensive and you don't want to have to feel desperate. You know, so one of my mentors said, how, how, how are you going to be the light when you worried about your light bill? 
right? So how can you even fully, it's hard to even be creative when you're stressed about your next meal. Yes. Yes, it really is. So I've always been, um, well, I've been real fortunate. Uh, I got a good man, girl. I just Come on. <laughs> sing praises to my man. I got a good man. He's taking such good care of me. And But uh, when I was like, okay, I'm going to do this on my own. You know, like I told you, I sold my car. I did what I needed to to make it work. Because when I was in New York, I didn't want to have to worry about paying my little grant. Right. You know, my light bill. I wanted to be able to do what I needed to do. Yeah. So um, that's a big, especially for everybody starting out. It really, yeah. yeah. What I love, what I love learning about you today, Donna, is what I, and is what I connect to excuse me, for myself, you, there's a drive, there's a drive within you. And there's a, I've had a, I've always had this hunger. Mm -hmm. And like, I get laser focused. Mm -hmm. And the nose just kind of, they just throw, get thrown off because that's not going to deter me from the vision yeah. that, I, that I know God has placed on my life. Right. So I'm loving hearing that from you. It just, it makes me feel seen and like not, not alone also. Yeah. Cause I, some of my friends were like, girl, you do so much. How you do all of that? I'm like, I got a vision. You got, yes, you do. And you do have to have that vision for you and where you want to be. And I, in that season, and cause girl, I got a manager that's a bulldog and we are just laser focused, focused, even in this late season of my life for me to get a certain place, to mm -hmm. a certain place. And in that, I think I found, cause I used to be like Samuel L. Jackson, honey, I don't turn down no work. I right. don't care what it is. <laughs> and I had to get to the place. And this is for those who are further along in their careers where you know where you want to go. Mm -hmm. You know what level you want to be on. You have to be willing to say no. Yeah. Yeah. And my manager is always, I know you like to work. <laughs> but we need to pass on this. Yeah. You know, because this is not what we're doing right now. And I think I'm finally in that place where I, I can say I get it. Yeah, it's a graduation. It's really? a graduation. And I had to do that. I had to graduate myself, especially when I moved to L.A. Yeah. Um, because my my managers were like, they hungry, too. Like, let's get it. And nobody knows you here, Christine. You got to just get it and meet people. Yeah. My agents, they're like, we don't even do co-stars. Like, we, what's, we don't even touch them. Like, we only do this and above. And it was a beautiful mix and that I needed to graduate. And and I had that hustle too. Like, I just want to, I'm like, but no, you have to, otherwise I'm training you to only call me for this stuff when I know I'm capable of more. Yes. Yes, ma'am. And even to this day, some of my agents, I'll get stuff and I'm going, why is she sending me this? <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't want to. Yeah. But no, I it's have ego about it. It's, but it's not like, that. It's, it's like, you don't, know you, you're not at this point. Right. Have you seen my resume? Like, why are you saying yeah. that two lines? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, and if so, that should, be, that should be all for all. that's okay, don't you, Christine? What'd you say? I, I think that's okay. Don't you to say, to be able to say, have you seen my resume? Why are you sending me this? Yeah, like, I, I, well, I mean, I've said it in much nicer ways, like... <laughs> And, and that was, I mean, honestly, that was a graduation moment also when I moved to LA because I still have my Atlanta agent for very random things. It has to be mm -hmm. something very large at this point. Yeah. Um, so they don't call me at much anymore. I mean, I love them, but it was that moment of no. Yeah. No. And no, that why, and why is that build that way when they're in the whole episode? Why are you still calling that a co star? And why, right. why won't you pay me? what that should be because that's really a top of show right so, yes so and it was so there was a wonky learning curve for everybody and adjustment and sitting in like you gonna make your insurance girl okay i'm gonna be good i said no to those Damn. god provides i'm abundant <laughs> <laughs> right. but it has I, I, I noticed the other day <laughs> 
and to do it. <laughs> but it was no, I, I I I stuck to it and it has not failed me. It has not failed yeah. me for sure. Before we wrap this, y'all, this has been juicy, y'all. Right? I told you about Nabisco. Come with the good good. Oh, um, I want you to this uh, truly. This has been and has this has been such a treat for me also, just because you have been someone who I have just seen do good work over the years and i've seen you on stage and i've seen you in everything <laughs> you know thank you so much. it was really nice to hear your story and and how you have you you because listen i coach some seeing some senior actors mm -hmm. and and i tell them like it's not just enough that you're cute and got gray hair you know like you what what you got to put this work in yeah yeah. And that's what makes you work. That and so the seniors that I that, that I do work with, and the ones who work, it's because they're doing they're they're doing this work. Like so, yeah, yeah. I'm the, still in the classes to this day. Even as much as I work every week, I'm in a class. You can never, ever, ever, ever learn enough. I mean, there's always something to learn about the craft itself. But there's always something to learn about you. Absolutely. You know, because you, you can't leave you out of it. Yeah. So uh, there's always that learning curve. Yeah. I think that's really important. The last thing I want to ask you before we go, um, and don't worry, y'all, I'm going to have links to everything for Donna in the show notes. That way, if you want to see and go back and see what you saw her in, I'll, I'll put links for everything there. But I want you to hold in your mind's eye, Donna, the seasoned actor who has maybe just hit a lull and they're questioning, maybe my time has, this is it. Maybe I just should just chalk it up. I'm done. I haven't worked in a long time. I don't know what it is. And then also holding your mind's eye, the young, new new to the, to the industry, very eager actor who just can't seem to get a breakthrough and still feels like maybe I'm bark, maybe I'm delusional. Maybe I'm barking up the wrong tree. Maybe I should just throw in a towel. So both are just feeling frustrated. If you could just give a offer a virtual hug, a, p a word of wisdom, advice, encouragement, what would that be? Hold on. There's always going to be at some point in your career, a lull, as I call it. And during that time, is one when you can engage in becoming better at the craft itself. And also now is the time to really search and seek out who you are as a person. So when you step in front of the camera, we see that. We see you know who you are and you bring whatever, whoever you are to that character. And know that somewhere down the line, even if it's the smallest of parts, it's coming if you don't give up. Because I know some people who started out with me that gave up. They were just like that. Oh, I can't do this anymore. But I'm the prime example. I hung in there. Mm -hmm. I didn't give up. I tried to get better. I tried to keep learning. And I'm in a season, and I am old, y'all. <laughs> I'm in a season where I am working more than I ever have in my entire career. Ooh, you see, that excites me. That gets me excited. It is never, please know and understand, it is never, ever, ever too late. It really is. And also know that your journey may not be in front of the camera. Mm, true. You gotta be open and willing to explore other things because I'm getting to that point. Like, I always want to be in the front. Hmm. 
I love to direct something. Come on, let's call it for us. Speak it. You know, to, to start going in that direction. But it's still in the industry, so it would still be fulfilling. But in any sense, just don't give up. Do what you need to do to survive <laughs> for the young ones and for the older ones. Enjoy your life. Yeah. Get out there and enjoy it, but stick to it. You know, don't sit around waiting on auditions. They'll, they'll come sooner or later. Just go out there and enjoy your life. Enjoy your grandkids, enjoy your wife, your husband, you know. But just don't, don't give up. Don't give up, y'all. You know, it's that thing too. Sometimes when we obsess over something, we're we're we have we have to we have to surrender. Mm -hmm. Open, like you said, living. Go do other things that fulfill you. Yes. You like watch 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 pot don't boil. It's like just, and you want to be fulfilled in this. If you if you still love it, because that's the thing too. Evaluate. If this is what you really want to do. Also. Right. Right. Oh, Donna Bisco. Thank you so much. This has been such a treat. So yeah, many. Thank you so much. It was so good talking to you. Same here. Y'all, if you've missed any part of the Booking Magnet Magic series, make sure you catch up. Um, again, you'll probably want to play this interview back a few times. There were so many, so many good nuggets. Um, thank, thank you so much. much. Thanks and sinners. We, we have some here on Sunday. Saints and sinners. Saints and sinners. Ooh, that show is juicy. That's the that show is <laughs> juicy. <laughs> we'll put, we'll, and we'll make sure we put some links to to, to that for, so that people can can actually catch up if they haven't seen some of the previous seasons. Okay, all right, cool. thank you all for watching, Donna. Thank you so much, and we'll Thanks see you in the next episode. Bye bye. Uh, bye bye.